All right, everyone, it is March the 1st, 2013. Spring is right around the corner. Gather around this morning. Come on, grab your coffee. Let's have our coffee first. Now, there's an old saying. March comes in like a lion and goes out like a lamb. Wouldn't it be wonderful? If this year March came in like the Lion of the Tribe of Judah and we go up with the Lamb. Oh, it's time to get excited as we're looking at end time Bible prophecy. We are going to be in the book of Acts, Acts 2 today for complete Bible study. And then we will have a discussion. Now, I want to mention, uh, I am moved to begin in the book of Acts. I have been moved by the Holy Spirit and when I am moved, I don't question. I just do as I'm told, and I move. Now, we went through the uh, Acts 1 yesterday, and you know I'm looking at the views, and that's okay. There's not a whole lot of views, but what's disturbing to me is we need to be in the Word. We need to be fed the meat of the Word, and there's a reason why I have been led to do these Bible studies in the morning and to begin in the book of Acts. There is a reason behind it. But I see so many videos out there in myself. If I did a video on Pope John Paul II comes back to life or meteors shooting across the sky and over Russia, they get thousands of views. But when we are in the meat of the word, a Bible study, the view counts very low. And that makes me question the church today. It really does. Now, yesterday we were in uh, Acts 1. And what a wonderful testimony we uncovered about the life, the times of our precious Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua, and the crucifixion and the glorious resurrection where for 40 days there were eyewitnesses that can attest to seeing Jesus alive. His disciples were able to see him, to touch him, and then to witness him going up to be met by a cloud and taken up to be with the Father until he returns. Then we discussed there were two messengers dressed in white and we question who could they be and I feel them to be messengers sent from the father angels and some were talking about they might be the two witnesses what a wonderful discussion we're having then we uh, learn in Acts 1 that the betrayer Judas Iscariot left the uh, disciples only with eleven and they prayed and it was decided by casting lots they prayed to Yahweh to God on what they should do because they wanted to replace Judas Iscariot with someone that was there that could be a living testimony an eyewitness to the events that took place the teachings of Jesus the crucifixion to attest to the resurrection and was there when Jesus was taken back up to the Father. They wanted someone that was there that could be an eyewitness to this testimony. And there are two choices. And after prayer with Yahweh, it was decided that Matthias would replace Judas Iscariot. All right. Now, you got to remember, Jesus told them, power will come upon you from the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And that's exactly what happens in part two. Let's begin Acts 2. Get out your King James Version Bible. And always the comment section is open for discussion. Now part two might be a little controversial to a, a lot of my brothers and sisters. That's why I want you to have your King James Bible out. And I am going to read the living word to you. Then I'm going to feed you the meat of the word this morning. Acts 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. 
All right, now all the apostles, the disciples were gathered together, all of one accord, and gathered in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Could you imagine them being all together, all in agreement of what they were going to do that day? And all of a sudden to hear this mighty, mighty rushing wind that completely filled the house. This is where the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost is coming upon them as Jesus told them would happen in Acts 1. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each one of them. Cloven tongues like a cloven hoof that is split in the middle. Now they have this vision, these cloven tongues just in flames of fire and sat upon each one of them. I'm getting I'm getting God bumps just talking about this. I don't understand why there are in ten million views the living word. The living word. No. And they were filled, I told you, they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now this is where it may get a little controversial. And I'm not going to give you my opinion. I'm just giving you the word. Amen? It's not my opinion. I'm going to read to you and feed to you the meat of the word. And again, it's not to upset any of my brothers and sisters. I'm just going to bring you the truth here. They were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. So, dwelling at Jerusalem at this time were, were the Jews, there were devout men, and out of every nation under heaven they were gathered. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Heard them speak in his own language. Remember, there were devout men out from every nation under heaven there. And now they hear. They hear the apostles, the disciples, Speaking in their own language. Now we got to remember, going back to the Tower of Babel, everyone spoke one language, and Yahweh God confused the languages so they couldn't understand one another, and scattered them. Now these people of other languages are hearing these men, these Galileans speaking their language. And a lot of people are saying it's an angelic language, language of the Holy Spirit. Um, but we've got to understand, we've got to really understand what we're reading here. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. So it wouldn't be an angelic language. It would be their language. Say for instance, um, all of a sudden you started to speak Hebrew and the person next to you would start speaking in Italian and the person next to you started speaking in Spanish and the person on the other side of you started speaking in German and this is what I'm trying to get across and this is just what the living word says it's not my thoughts it's not my words it's the living word and they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Now, if this was an angelic uh, language of the angels, they wouldn't understand what they were saying, what the Galileans were saying. 
what the disciples of Yeshua were saying. They wouldn't understand. But in verse 8, and how hear we every man in our tongue. Not in an angelic tongue, but in our tongue. Our language. Wherein we were born. All right. Uh, Parvians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and in Cappadocia, in Pontus and in Asia, in um, Physia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues, our language, the wonderful works of God. And they were amazed. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? How is it that they know our language? Others mocking said, These men are full of wine. Now in verse 14. But Peter, the outspoken one, standed, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But it is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And we see that happening today. People are prophesying. And I need to correct my own self. Because I have mentioned this in a video before. And this is what is so good about bringing the Word and reading the Word and having a Bible study. And, and I was reading this uh, in, on a comment of a video yesterday that I believe that I may have put out or it was someone else's video where Yeshua, Jesus, was the last to give the prophecies. But right here it tells you your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. So on that point, I want to stand corrected. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in these days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Remember, Peter is preaching now. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, amen, and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now they are doing just what Jesus told them to do, to go out and spread the gospel to the whole world. And Peter is preaching, and the disciples are right there, now joined together of one accord, and they are spreading the word to all these people from across all the nations that came to hear them speak in their own tongue. And ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourself also knew. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God ye have taken and by wicked hands you have crucified and slain whom God hath raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be holden of it 
For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Talk about preaching, amen. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my breast shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance, men and brethren. Let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his scepter is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing us before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses, all of them now, even with now uh, the replacement of Judas Iscariot, Matthias, are all witnesses, and that's what Jesus wanted eyewitnesses to go out and preach to the nations. <coughs> Excuse me, and this is just what's happening now. They were given power, just as Jesus told them, of the Holy Spirit. This Jesus hath God raised up, where are we all are witnesses. We've seen this. We were there with him. We walked with him while he performed miracles and healed the sick cast out demons. We were there. We seen him crucified. We seen him resurrected from the tomb. We see him go up to be with the Father. They are eyewitnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, and that's what they have now. They have received that promise. He has shed for this which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you of the good news and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. Wow, what power. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul that we don't have today, amen. Fear. To work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And repentance, repent, repent, repent. Fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together. And had all things common. 
and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men. They took everything they had. They sold everything, all their goods, all their possessions, and parted them to all men, gave them away to those that needed them, to the needy, and every man had need, as every man had need. They gave to the needy, and they continued daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from, the ho from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God, and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. I love you all. What a lesson today. What a lesson today. Acts 2. I love you all. Please leave comments. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Let go of the things of this world. All your material desires. Give to those that are in need, your brothers and sisters. Love one another. Leave me comments, everyone. God bless you.